Hi folks, you've now learned all of the proof rules for the system bool. So what we're going to do is now practice them by doing something slightly difficult. What I want you to do is try to prove the sentence P or not P. This is not an easy sentence to prove because you don't get any assumptions. There's no premises up here. You have to prove this from no premises at all because it's a tautology. The other thing we're gonna do in this video is practice taking the shortcuts with the reductio rule, negation intro. So when I say take all the shortcuts, see if you can figure out. There's several places where you can take shortcuts to try to prove this. Okay, so pause your videos now to see if you can complete this proof. Okay, that was your chance to pause your videos. Uh, let's talk about the answer. The first thing that I do in this proof is I assume the opposite of my conclusion. Here's the tip. Anytime you're trying to prove a tautology in Boole, there's only one way to do it, to do it by reductio or negation intro. There are no premises, so I cannot apply any Elim rules whatsoever. This is the only rule which gives myself new information uh, a new premise to work with. So when I make my reductio assumption, here it's not a wide scope negation. If this were a wide scope negation, I would assume what's inside the scope, but this is a wide scope disjunction. So I have to put a new negation symbol wide scope around the whole thing. That's my reductio assumption. And of course my goal is to prove a contradiction down here, and then I'm going to be done. I can justify the conclusion with negation intro. Now, if this, if this beginning of the proof didn't occur to you, pause your videos now and see if you can complete the rest of the proof. What would you do next? Okay, that was your chance to pause your videos. What I want you to do, if you didn't get this far, is work your way, you gotta put in the effort to work th through the proof as much as you can. Now, the thing that you do next is assume P. You're doing another reductio inside the first reductio. Now, how would this occur to you? If this didn't occur to you, what do you need to know? What do you need to learn for the future? The thing to notice is, I look at the main connective here, and there is no double negation. I can't apply a negation either, but this is a wide scope negation. I also cannot apply a disjunction elim. I can't do proof by cases because it's not a wide scope disjunction. This is one of those annoying patterns of a negation around a disjunction, and you have to know how to deal with this pattern. I explained it in the handout, I heart formal proofs. So if you, if you aren't familiar with this proof method, you need to read that handout. What that method says is, I, I assume one of those disjuncts, like P. Now that I have P, I can build the disjunction, P or not P. This is what I call the five-step plan. Once I've got P or not P, you see this thing directly contradicts this thing because I have some sentence and then the negation of that sentence. So that's grounds for introducing the, the contradiction symbol. Of course, this is, this is a reductio. What I've done is I've completed a proof of not P. I can introduce the negation symbol here. Now, once I get not P, I can use the disjunction intro trick to get P or not P again. And I'm, now I'm deriving a contradiction symbol in this reductio, just like I derived it in the previous reductio. So once I prove the contradiction symbol here, that allows me to do negation intro on my final conclusion. So it's really possible to do this thing in just eight lines, but only if I'm taking two different shortcuts. So the first shortcut I take is, I, well, as soon as I get not P, I build the disjunction here. I don't do the five-step plan again, but I just skip right to my, uh, the, the sentence that I'm going to do, the sentence that's the opposite of my original assumption. And then the second shortcut, once I prove this contradiction here, I, this was the negation that I stuck on front of it. So if I were doing the long way, I would have not not P down here, or not not P or not P. But I'm taking that reductio shortcut, I'm suppressing the negation elim step of, and uh, jumping straight to P or not P. Let me give you the long version so you see what I'm contrasting this with. So here's the exact same proof, but done in a longer way. See, instead of shortcut number one, there's a different way I could have gotten to that contradiction symbol. I could have applied the five-step plan to my other disjunct here. I could have assumed not P in order to get the contradiction, because that would allow me to prove P. And now these two sentences directly contradict each other. So this is a longer way to get to the contradiction. But here's a tip. Anytime you need to assume, or you're, you catch yourself assuming something that you already know, usually there's a better way of doing it because almost never should you assume what you already know. You're just gonna um, take some unnecessary steps. The other shortcut that I took, this is the, the reductio shortcut. So technically speaking, when I assumed not P or not P, to do the reductio negation intro, I should have stuck the negation, the long way is to stick the extra negation on there and then do negation elim. But if I'm going to take the shortcut, I can suppress that step. I don't do the negation elim step. I just jump straight to my conclusion like I did previously 
and cite it with negation intro. So if you took all the shortcuts, you could have done the thing in eight lines. If you skipped those two shortcuts, you might have done 13 lines. Technically speaking, I'm actually taking, still taking one shortcut here. Pause your videos and see if you can find where the shortcut is. There's still one shortcut that I'm taking. Okay, I wonder if you found it. The shortcut is on line 10. Because here, I'm doing a reductio on P, but since this is not a wide scope negation, uh, what I did was I assumed not P. So really, I'm suppressing the not not P step and the negation elim there. So there's, a third, there's still one shortcut this is taking. This is not working out the entire proof with no shortcuts. Okay, now there's a really common error. So there's something that you might have done when you completed this proof. I'm wondering if you tried to do it this way. So what this proof method does is it does the five-step plan twice. It goes from P to contradiction. It goes from not P to contradiction. But the way it cites the contradiction symbol out here on line eight is disjunction elim. What I want you to tell me is, What's the problem with this proof? Where does this thing go wrong? Pause your videos and see if you could diagnose the error here. Okay, uh, that was your chance to pause your videos. The error occurs on line eight. This is the thing that, that does not check out, disjunction elim. Why is this a violation of the rule? This says, remember, anytime you do disjunction elim, you must know a disjunction you're citing. You can only do disjunction elim on a disjunction. And this says, well, my disjunction is line one, because look, it looks like there's a disjunction here. But remember, sentences are defined by their main connectives. This is not a disjunction. This is a negation. So you are never allowed to do disjunction elim on a sentence like this, because this is a negation around a disjunction. That negation closes up, it bottles up the information there, and it doesn't allow you to do disjunction elim. That's why you need the five-step plan. That's why you need an alternate method of extracting information out of there. Like this method, the five-step plan allows me to get information out of there without doing disjunction elim. So pay attention to those patterns where you have negation, wide scope around something else. If you wanna get practice at this, try to do this proof in both directions because this is just one of the De Morgan's laws. Negation around a disjunction allows me to prove this. Also swap them because this equivalence goes in both directions. I should be able to assume this sentence and then prove this as the contradiction. If you want practice to really master these proof rules, I would suggest doing this equivalence in both directions. In fact, it's not just this equivalence. Take every equivalence that you know. There's two different proofs you could practice here. Assume one of those and prove the other and then go in the opposite direction. Every equivalence is two formal proofs. So you can use all of these. There's so much practice you could be doing. Okay, so in this video, what we tried to do was do some more difficult proofs with the Boolean rules and learn how to deal with some of these patterns like negation around a disjunction and how to prove tautologies like the sentence P or not P while using the shortcuts. All right, thanks.